In this video we're going to look at sound waves and the waves that are in the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so really look at some uses and some real world applications of waves. Okay, so first up looking at sound waves then. So if you think about sound waves, we need a medium for the sound wave to travel through. Okay, uh, you might have heard the famous quote from Alien in space on key screen. It's actually based on sound scientific truth. Okay, um, if there are no particles there, no medium, uh, the wave or the sound can't vibrate any particles and so the sound cannot travel okay uh, it's also the reason that sound sounds different in different mediums okay so if you listen to um, the sound of a dolphin underwater it sounds very different to the sound of a dolphin if it's out of the water okay and similarly with you speaking under the water okay the sound will actually be able to travel faster underwater because there are a lot more particles to vibrate and so it'll travel faster but that has effect on the frequency and the wavelength and so it doesn't really sound and you can't really hear it and understand it as well as outside of the water okay um so from the spec you can see you're supposed to know that sound waves are longitudinal uh, and they cause a vibration and that is passed along okay remember the particles don't move themselves the particles just oscillate the energy is transferred all right, so the two basic things that you need to know about that change the, uh, what, well, what you hear when you hear a sound, all right? So these are the amplitude. So the amplitude, remember, is the uh, maximum displacement from the equilibrium position, okay? And this is about the size of the vibration. The bigger the amplitude is, the louder the sound is, okay? So a very loud sound will have a big amplitude. A quiet sound will have a small amplitude. The second thing that you can change is the frequency. Okay, so remember frequency was the number of waves or the number of vibrations there are every second. Uh, the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch or the higher the note will be. Okay, so very high frequency sounds will sound very high, whereas a low frequency sound will sound well low. All right. Okay, so this drawing a sound wave then. So if you imagine a speaker, uh, a speaker moves backwards and forwards and passes energy into the particles in the air in front of it causing a vibration and causing a sound okay remember there is an amplitude and a period so the bigger the vibration the bigger the amplitude of the wave and the louder the sound will be if we increase the speed at which the speaker is backwards and forwards we will increase the frequency if you increase the frequency remember you will decrease the time period of the wave so decrease the time period increase the frequency increase the pitch Right, so the second use or second set of waves we're going to look at is the electromagnetic spectrum. So the electromagnetic spectrum is a group or a collection of waves that really describe radiation and how this transfers energy. Okay, so every type of radiation is going to have a different wavelength and a different frequency. But they all travel at the same speed in a vacuum and this is the speed of light which is 300 million meters per second okay so the spectrum itself then is made up of these uh, seven waves so starting off with radio waves which have the longest wavelength okay and ended up with gamma rays which have the shortest wavelength but the highest frequency okay you will have to know the order of these waves uh, the order respective of wavelength or frequency so remember radio waves have the longest wavelength and gamma rays have the shortest wavelength gamma rays however have the highest frequency and radio waves have the lowest frequency okay you're also expected to know some uses and potentially some of the dangers of these waves okay so uses radio waves fairly straightforward we use it for radio tv and also communication between devices okay not really that dangerous. If it were dangerous, we'd be in a lot of trouble because obviously these days with the amount of phones, with the amount of televisions that are around, uh, there are a lot of these waves in the air around us. Next, we have microwaves. So microwaves are used commonly for mobile phones. Obviously also the microwave in your uh, house, okay? Um, microwaves really have one danger, heating, okay? So if you imagine a microwave as it cooks your food, it heats up the water in the food. Okay, microwaves do exactly the same thing to cells, which is why there's quite a bit of research currently going on to look at the effects of microwaves from mobile phones with humans and how they affect it. Okay, next up we have infrared. Infrared, you've probably seen in a remote control. 
Okay, infrared's also used for heat vision. All right, you might notice from like some computer games or if you're particularly interested in the army. And I suppose another one, toasters and grills. Uh, infrared, it's the transfer of heat energy, remember, from a previous unit. Uh, its main danger is that it's heat. Okay, so it's going to get pretty hot and it could potentially burn. Uh, in the remote control, you're using very small amounts of energy though. So chances are you're not going to get damp hurt from that. Sorry. Um, visible light, pretty obvious. We use it to see. Thankfully, there are no dangers to this. Uh, ultraviolet, this is emitted from the sun. Okay, uh, this is used in sunbeds and if you've ever seen a black light, okay, so for security pens. Um, the big danger is skin cancer, okay, and also it can damage your eyes. You'll notice that when you buy uh, sun cream, obviously, and also when you buy sunglasses, that they'll have a UV protection factor on it. So x-rays, obviously used for checking bones in hospitals. Um, the x-rays are reflected off the bone and can't pass through, but they can pass through the skin quite easily. Uh, more controversially used recently in airport security, okay, just to check for those objects that they don't want on planes. Big risk is cancer, okay, x-rays are very ionising, which means they can damage your cells and damage your DNA and potentially give you cancer, okay, so you've got to watch the amount of x-rays you have every year, um, one or two aren't dangerous, if you start getting into double figures then you have to start thinking a bit about the risks against the reward, okay, and then finally we have gamma rays, gamma rays, used for a lot of things okay ranging from actually cancer so treating cancer they can be used to kill the cancer cells unfortunately they also kill the healthy cells but you try and limit the exposure to the healthy cells they also use for killing the cells to preserve fruit and um, they kill all the bacteria that's on it and sterilizing medical instruments okay again another danger because there's such high energy uh, waves they could potentially give you cancer Okay, which is, I suppose, a bit strange to think, seeing as it's used to cure cancer. Here's electromagnetic spectrum displayed on one big scale. Okay, you can see down here, gamma rays, which have a very short wavelength indeed. But remember, gamma rays have a high frequency. Okay, and all the way to the other end of the spectrum, we've got radio waves with a wavelength of order of a kilometre. Okay, so much longer than a gamma ray. But remember, they're going to have a much lower frequency.